الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ولا سيما سيدنا محمد المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله اهل الصفا ورضي الله عن اصحابه اهل الوفا وعمن باثاره مقتفى واهتدى اما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Let me just start by saying that I am not only humbled by your presence but very humbled by the introduction of my fellow uh, brother Allah bless him and preserve him and I'm also humbled by his good thinking in other people The topic is difficult, so I will not play politics with you. The topic was never easy, for a very simple reason. Let's begin first with the Book of Allah, for the Barakah, inshaAllah, and then illumination. For a Nabi Adam Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam said in the authentic hadith in the Ahsan al Hadith, Kitab Allah Ta'ala, Wa Khayru al Hadi Hadi Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, Wa Shar al Umuri Muhdathatuha, Kulu Muhdathatan Bida, Kulu Bidaatan Dalala, Kulu Bidaatan Finna. The authentic hadith you all know of. That the best of hadith is Kitabullah. And the best of hadith, the best of guidance, is then Hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So I also would like to encourage you to make salah and salam on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam every time you hear his name. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وليمحص الله المؤمنين الذين آمنوا يمحص الله الذين آمنوا ويمحق الكافرين أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة ولما يعلم الله الذين آمنوا منكم ويعلم الصاد ويعلم الصادق ويعلم الصادقين. The meaning of the ayah ليمحص الله الذين آمنوا that Allah puts those who believe are through tests. He puts them through trial. Their life is a trial. Then the next ayah goes to say, Am hasibtum man tadkhulul jannah? Or do you think you shall be granted paradise? And Allah knows those who amanumi, those who really believe amongst you. وَيَعْلَمْ And he knows الصَّابِرِينَ Those who persevere and are patient and persistent. Life itself is not a walk in the park, unfortunately, as we would like it to be. Life is a test for everybody. Don't just think for yourself. Those who are missing money, they think all they need to make them happy is some money. And those who have money and missing other things they need, they think all they need is to have the other thing that they're missing. And those who have no health, they're willing to give all their money to, give some, to get some health back. And those who have no uh, comfort or inner peace, they're willing to give all the power and the money to get their inner peace, inner, inner peace. Everyone is going through some kind of trial. This is the nature of life. That's why Allah calls it dunya, hayatu dunya. It's hayat, but dunya. There is hayat in the akhirah, ulya, and there is hayat, dunya. Lower kind of, lower form of life. You can see why it would be the lower form of life, since we are capacitated to do good and equally to do wrong. We can all do good, 
or we can do wrong. Allah says that clearly in the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَبَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا The nafs, the meaning of the ayah, the nafs Allah created. Those who seek purification of their heart, purification of their soul, they'll rise. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا And those who don't, وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Those who don't seek purification of their heart, they will lose. They live for their body. Their whole life revolves around their body. Not only what they clothe their body with, not only what they house their body with, not only what kind of ride they provide for their body, not kind of what kinds of other things they just buy for their body and all these things. I was walking through the mall yesterday, the Trafford Center in Manchester. And we're going through the mall and I saw this, uh, this thing here on one of these, on the walls, anti-aging cream. Would be nice if it was true, wouldn't it? But we're willing to spend everything and give everything for the body. In fact, we dress so other people can appreciate what we have on our bodies. And we ride the cars so others say you've got a nice ride for the body. And the way we live and all these things and the furniture for our body and, the, and everything we have and the schools, even the degrees that we have from the universities. So we can have titles before our names that represent the body. But we oftentimes neglect our soul. And that whole scheme of thinking, I'm not saying you should not seek an education. Education is very important. What killed us is the lack of education. If I can say education, 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 and not stop, that would be the answer. The first ayah that was revealed to an Nabi al-A'zam, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, iqra. indication for acquiring knowledge. We need to read. We need to learn. No matter how expensive it is. I always say, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Life is a test. You make your choices. That's just the name of the game. You have a choice to do good, you have a choice to do bad. You choose. You choose. Allah gave you that power, that capacity. Whatever you choose, though, is not going unaccounted for. Even the little thing. That little blink of an eye. That little couple of words of saying something about somebody. Any injustice. Allah created this world with justice. If you do injustice to others, if you believe in a creator, you gotta believe that the creator is just al -adil. And if you believe that the creator is just, nothing unjust that you do will go unaccounted for. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. مَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ if you do worth, an atom worth of good, you shall be rewarded. If you do an atom worth of evil, you will be accountable for it. Simple. لا ظلم اليوم. The Quran specifies there's no, no more injustice in the, in the Akhirah. In the dunya, the dunya is filled with injustices. People do injustices to each other. People harm each other. I'm not saying only harming by killing, that's on a one harm. Like it's sometimes the word is sharper than the sword. And the wounds of the knife may heal, but the wounds of the words may never heal. You will be accountable for that if you do something wrong. That's just, that's just how it is. That's why we call it judgment day. No one goes unaccounted for it. You're rewarded for what you do. Do good, you're giving good. Do wrong, you do the time, 
You do the crime, you do the time, right? Since this life is all a test, even our salah is a try is a test. What does that mean? You, you do your salah, so you allocate the time for your prayers. But the whole salah, you vacate the salah from its meaning. The salah is supposed to be a sila, which means connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then we rush to do the salah while vacating it from what the salah means. So the salah becomes ritual rather than spiritual. And therefore we can pray tens of years and hundreds of years and we're not getting any benefit out of the salah at all. As if we've never prayed. It's not shaping our character. It's not transforming us to be better people. That salah after you came to the Jum'an, after you came to Dhuhr, or after you prayed Asr, after you did this, has not changed you to be a better person. Has not raised you to the level that the Qur'an and the Sunnah want you to be at. Has not transformed you to be a better person. Has not absorbed you in its anwar. Because you were resistant to its anwar from the get-go. You were just doing the ritual. Test. Life is a test. What are we doing? Al Quran Karim explicitly says, "Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim." Tabarak al-ladhi biyadhi al-mulk, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Al-ladhi khalaq al-mawt wal-hayat li yabluwakum. He created life and death, so he tests you. Yabluwakum means so you test it. It's fair. Because we can all do good and we can all do bad. It's fair. It's just. Our siyam is the same thing, as a test. Our hajj is the same thing. Your school that you're attending in this university and other schools is a test. What are you doing with that time? Time is precious. What are you doing with it? How are you investing yourself? What kind of things you're investing your time with? Where are you? What do you, where do you stand? What is your mission in life? Being fair is a test. It's very easy to talk about justice. It's very difficult to practice being just. It's easy that we talk and articulate justice. You know, you should do this, you should do that. That's nice, that's fair. How many of us practice being just on themselves? holding themselves from transgressions and aggressions against others in any way, shape, or form. I don't think any family in history as a collective, as a family unit has been subjected to trials like the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I mean by that family, specifically Ahlul Kisa. I appreciate Ahlul Kisa are the five that were wrapped up by the cloth, as in the authentic hadith, by Wathila, by Umm Salama, when she said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam, when the ayah was revealed, the Tabarani narrates in his Awsat and others, with the essence of it in Sahih Muslim, in Hadith Sa'd, and others. When the ayah was revealed, Innama yuridu Allahu li yudhiba ankum ur rijisa ahl al bayt, wa yutahirakum tatahira. Allah wills to purify you, O household of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And I know we have many interpretations of it and many opinions that take this ayah right and left. And I always like to listen to the opinions and then go back to what the Prophet ﷺ said. Because oftentimes we sort of put lots of things surrounding what Allah said and what Rasulullah ﷺ said to hold. And we practically hold the Quran and the authentic Sunnah under siege. It is a difficult scene because the Ummah
from almost its inception, yani almost from the first hundred years of this Ummah, it split around this concept, Ahlul Bayt, and their role and who they are. This difference I will not be solving it today, nor do I care to actually touch that base. That's not my, that's not what I'm here today for. The differences between Ahl Sunnah and the Shia with their various degree, various sects on Ahl Sunnah within their various groups and all that, that's not what I'm here for. But obviously, having that in mind, you know that this is no, this topic was no easy topic for the Ummah itself to handle and to reconcile for over almost four, 1400 years, 1300 some at least. And because it is that topic that the Ummah is divided around, obviously we're going to take the texts and all sects and all groups will go around the texts, and I mean by text is Quran and authentic Sunnah, and they will try to put whatever they want around the text to take it, to take the text this way or that way. So, you can listen to whatever you like. And I'd like to listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said and what he defined, what he defined. His definition of things. His words of things. And we respect everyone else's. Sahaba and otherwise, obviously they have all their, our love and, 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 and admiration. But the Prophet Sallallahu words are, as we all know, ما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى. So the hadith of Abu Salama is that when the ayah was revealed, that the, which means Allah was to purify your household of the, of the Prophet, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala called on Fatima to Zahra and he told her, "Go call your husband and your two children." So she went. Then he took a cloth that he had, different narration what kind of cloth it is, a cloth, cloth, it's a piece of cloth it is, and he wrapped himself and Fatima to Zahra, Wa Ali and Hassan and Hussein wrapped them all up with this cover, with this piece of cloth or the Srida, and said, Allahumma inna haulari hum. Oh Allah, those are Ahlu Bayti. فَأَذْهِبْ عَنْهُمُ الرِّجِسَ Oh Allah, purify them. وَطَهِّرْهُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Make them mutahareen. It's his words. Ahlu Kisa. The kisa is that wrap that he wrapped him with, kisa. Whatever, we, I'm not going to go into the differences who Ahlul Bayt are because this is a, it will take us hours and hours. So I'm going to stay away from that topic at this point. But I want to say something that we all agree on, I think, everyone, that Ahlul Kisa are part of Ahlul Bayt. And I need to say, based on what the Prophet wasallam said, Ahlul Kisa are the essence of Ahlul Bayt. Muhammad wa Ali wa Fatima wal Hassan wa al Hussein. What is he? The great one? Huh? Oh. If he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh Allah, those are my household, those are Ahlul Bayti, I say those are Ahlul Bayti. Now Ahlul Bayt in the general sense may include Al Ali, wa Al Aqil, wa Al Abbas, wa Al Ja'far, and the honorable wives of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the, as you all know in the, whole, in the hadith of Muslim by Zayd. Huh? That's the opinion of Sayyidina Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Like, and let's focus on the essence of Ahlul Bayt, Ahlul Kisa, those who are wrapped up by that cloth. Those were the ones that were tried. Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha wa radaha wa alayhi salam passed away six months after her father sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam passed away. 
Historians uh, estimate her age between 18 and 28. Then every other one from Al Kisa was killed. Ali, Al Hassan, and Al Hussein. Family that was so close and dear. I don't want you to go to, like, because nowadays we change our deen to tabarruk purposes only. Yeah, our whole deen became for rituals only, for barakah purposes. Even when we read the Quran, we read it for barakah purposes. We recite it for barakah. When we read the sunnah, oh, it's like it goes from one year to another year. Oh, we've read it, but you've read it for tabarruk only, for barakah. We fail to understand that the book and the sunnah were not revealed only for barakah, but they were revealed for us to believe in and to practice and enact. So therefore, we talk about Ahl al-Bayt, often times we talk about, oh, they were beloved to the Prophet After all, they were his family. That's not the point. That is a point, but not the point. Yani, what I'm trying to tell you is this. The reason, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that Ali on Minni wa Anam and Ali in the authentic hadith, Ali is from me, I am from Ali. The reason he said Fatima tun bata'atun minni or bata'atun me both ways, Fatima is a piece of me. The reason he said Hassan is from me, and the reason he said I am from Hussein and Hussein is from me, not simply of the genetic DNA blood. It's not connection, it's not wasta. It's not, you know, I know him, so he's my grandfather, so that's why I get to be the masters of the youth of Ahlul Jannah. It's because of their merits. What they have done. What they stood for. But again, being in the tenter of pulling this way and pulling that way between the Ummah, we oftentimes lost them. Lost them in that big dust that we've made because of the quarrels between the Ummah. And the mental tennis back and forth, and the fights, and the intellectual battles that take place. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam, as you all know in the hadith that Imam Muslim narrates in the Sahih, and others, two times in Hajjat al-Wada, Two times, not once. So the only pilgrimage that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made, the only one, and the last one, where all the whole Ummah gathered to go to Hajj with the Nabi Al-Azam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Men, women, children from Arabia, from Africa, from whatever it is that they could come, everyone who heard that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had permission to go to Hajj, they all came. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to this Hajjatul Wada on the day of Arafah as a Tirmidhi narrates in his, uh, in his Jami' and he declares Hassan wa huwa Hassan hadith insha'Allah ta'ala where he says Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the day of Arafah so not only in the Hajj, the last Hajj and all the people there in Arafah where everyone is standing on the mountain and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stands at the hadith of Jabir on his or sits on his mule and tells people, Oh people, I am leaving you two things. If you hold on to them, you will never be misguided after me. Kitabullahi wa itarati ahla bayti. The kitab of the book of Allah and my itara ahla bayti. In front of hundred, maybe 100,000, excess of 100,000 people. Then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaves Mecca and goes back to Medina with the Sahaba that came with him from Medina, the whole delegation. He stops in a place between Mecca and Medina and he tells them clean the area. So they clean the area with Hadith al-Sahih, Rawah al Muslim and others. Fiddawhat. And he stands next to trees, big trees in front of the big Sahaba, عنهم, yani all with him, there was Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, 
and Sa'ad Sa'id, and all the big Sahaba were there. Everyone, and thousands maybe of people were with him at that time, still returning back to Medina. And he tells him, O oh people, ayyuhan nas, yushiku an yati rasul rabbi fawjib. It is maybe time, my time is already close. And maybe any time, the call from, from my Lord is coming to me, and I may have to leave you. So he's leaving them with something. And I'm leaving you with two things. If you hold on to them, you will not be misguided after me. Kitab Allahi wa itarati ahla bayti. The book of Allah and my itra. Then he goes to say, we'll talk as what well, itra ahla bayti. He goes to say, wala yatafarraqa, and they will not be separable. They will always be together. They are inseparable. Hatta yarida alayya al hawd until they both, Al Quran and the Itra, Ahl al both come to me at the basin. Fanduru kayfa takhlifuni fihima. The additions are also authentic. So see how you treat them after me. How you treat the Quran, the first heavy weight, and how you treat the Ahl al the second weight. Then. He took the hands of Ali, and this hadith is mutawatir, not only sahih, beyond sahih. And he says, Man kuntu mawla fa'aliyun mawla. Um, I am his mawla. Ali is his mawla. He goes back to Medina, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He stops by them, telling them every day. By the house of Ali wa Fatima. Assalamu alaikum ahl al-bayt. As-salah. Some people don't like that. They don't like that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I left you two things, my book and the itra ahl al-bayt. They like to change it for the Sunnah instead. There is a hadith that is narrated that may amount to Sahih, not, not for its own merits. See, I know independent Senate of it is Sahih for its own merits, but the corroborative asaneed of the hadith may amount it to Sahih, as some of the Huffaz mentioned, in which the Nabi Sallallahu said, I am leaving you two things, the book of Allah and my sunnah. It's narrated through five different asani. None of them is sahih by itself. But the meaning is true, no doubt. The Quran itself mandates the sunnah. Because the Quran says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa ma atakum ar-Rasulu faqadhuhu wa ma nahakum anhu fantahu. What the Rasul gives you, you take. That's the Sunnah. It's mandate of the Sunnah. Disbelief in the Sunnah means disbelief in the Quran, and disbelief in the Quran means disbelief in the Sunnah. So when a Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells you that I left you a thiqar al-akbar, the heavy weight is a kitab Allah. Kitab Allah mandates his Sunnah because the kitab tells you pray, but doesn't tell you how to pray. You follow the Sunnah, and he tells you sallu kama ra'aytumuni yusalli. Pray as you've seen me pray. Al Quran tells you to do Hajj. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ Huh? لَكَنَ الْقُرْآنَ does not tell you how to do Hajj. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells you as in the authentic hadith, خُذُوا عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ Take your manasik from me. So by the heavy weight or the first weight, then it is the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And by second weight is the Itra. The Itra that he defined. He said, Allahumma haula, oh Allah, those are my household. Why is he putting his household as a standard after the Quran and the Sunnah? So if we do it proper standard, it would be the Quran, then would be the Sunnah, then would be the five. Why? I am saying the five also, so my dear brothers and sisters, Allah bless you all. I know this is a matter of contention and disagreement of who is Ahlul Bayt and all that. While we believe obviously that Ahlul Bayt in the general sense includes everybody, the five and the wives and 
the whole tribe of Bani Hashim, and if even you go to the whole tribe of Abdul Muttalib and the offspring of the five until the day of judgment. In a wider sense. Even in a bigger, wider sense, the whole Ummah. But again, I'd like to remain with what the Prophet ﷺ's words right now. Because even if that is to be true, then the focus was what the Nabi Mustafa وسلم, said himself. And in no other hadith he defined it any other way. It exists not. Al Kisa are the essence, the people of the cloth. Why is he making them the standard? After the Quran, the Sunnah, you need to look at the Al-Qisad and he tells you that, and then he tells you they are inseparable from the Quran. They are the ally of the Quran. They are the companion of the Quran. Yani they are inseparable from the book. Until they come to me at the basin. The Quran both and the Itra and the Al-Bayt will go to the Prophet وسلم, to at the basin in the day of judgment. Unseparable, inseparable. That means those five live their lives inseparable from the Quran. Why so special? I don't grant favors. You don't grant favors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that grants everyone things. The same question people asked, why was Muhammad? Why wasn't someone else? لو لا نزل هذا القرآن على رجل من القريتين عظيم. Why wasn't this Quran? The Quran says on behalf of Quraysh. Why wasn't the Quran revealed on someone else other than Muhammad? أهم يقسمون رحمة ربك. Are they the ones who divide the mercy of your Lord? The Quran asks. But there are other reasons as well. Not only that the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said all of them are from me. And in that specific sense, no other person is included in that, in that specific sense. Let me take you to a little bit more. I don't want to take too much of your time. I want to take you through some scenes of the life of some of the figures of Adam Bait. But because it has been about give and take, and it has been about what is their role, and there are some people who went extreme in them, in Ahlul Bayt, extreme, Ghulu, and some people as a reaction also went to extreme in suppressing them, marginalizing them, and making it more ceremonial. Yeah, and in the role of Ahlul Bayt as a reaction to some people, became ceremonial in a sense. I mean, okay, number one, don't bother saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Just say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's okay. It is. But when you look at Bukhari and you see what the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the Sahaba when they asked him, how do we make Salah and Salam on you, Ya Rasulullah? Teach us. He told them, say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Muhammadin he didn't say just say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Even when we talk about them, it is ceremonial. And then some people develop ultra sensitivities from talking about Ahl Bayt. Why? Because of the intellectual terrorism. It's called intellectual terrorism. In other words, groups that terrorize people academically and intellectually that exists amongst very own, we as Ahl Sunnah. And I bring no other example than Imam, than Imam Abu Hanifa himself, and <coughs> Imam Shafi'i. Both of them were accused of being Shi simply for expressing their love and loyalty to Ahl al-Bayt. By who? Well, obviously they didn't. Those who accused them of being Shias, they didn't mean to say that Shia was a good thing. Number one, they meant to say that this is deviance. And number two, they were accused by very people who called themselves Ahl Sunnah. 
Not only Abu Hanifa was Shafi'i, so Shafi'i had to say, in kana rafdan hubbu ali Muhammadin, fal yashhadi thaqalanan ya rafidhi. He says, if it's rafd, to love the family of Muhammad, then everyone testify that I'm the biggest rafidhi. That's what the Shafi'i said. But not only that, Al-Hakim, Abu Abdullah, Sahib al-Mustadrak, the Hafiz, the Sunni Imam, also intimidation. Not only him, Al-Nasai, Imam Al-Nasai was also killed by those who did not view Nasai, the one who has the Sunan, was killed by those. They actually killed the man. Would Darabut, he said, Allah gave him Shahada because he thought, he said, he expressed his love to Ali. Uh, Darabut himself, was Sam'ani himself were accused of being Shia. Very funny, guess why? Because they memorized one qasida of al himyal of one, shi one poet, one Shia poet. So even memorizing, because they, they remembered, they memorized the diwan of the Sayyidina Mir. So because they memorized one diwan, people, what I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, is this intellectual terrorism was carried out against the Imams of Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah by people who called themselves Ahlus Sunnah. All right, so keep that in mind. We'll open up a Zahabi's Siyar and you'll see all these things and all that. And the reason for that is because some people's hearts cannot stand the Fada'il of Ahl Bayt. Because they think if we say that, we're giving in to our long-lasting enemy, Shia. Last time I checked, haq is haq irrespective of who says it. Don't put me against any other frame. The frame is the book and the sunnah. That's the frame. It's not what the Shia says, what the sunnah says, what the khawarij says. Mind you, I have in my heart nothing against any sect or any group. Though I believe I belong, I'm a Muslim number one and I belong I'm a Muslim, I don't put, give myself any other name than that, other than that. Because Allah called me, as He called us, all of us in the Quran, He named you Muslims, the meaning of the ayah. I don't exchange a name that Allah named me for a name that I came up with. In respect of what that name is. That's number one. If you ask me about my method of deduction from the texts from the Quran and the Sunnah, I tell you, I follow the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. Okay? That doesn't mean I have hate or teach hate against any sect that says La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I may disagree, and unfortunately I believe that the differences between the 12 Shias, our brothers in Islam today, and Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah as we stand today are irreconcilable, as the schools are today. For whatever reason I don't care to get into today, but they're Muslims. And also the offspring of the Khawarij who are live today in Oman, Sultanate of Oman, and Southern Algeria, who are precipitation of Khawarij, they're called the Ibadi sects or the Abadi sects, are also Muslims, I believe anyway. And all the people that say La ilaha illallah Muhammad or Rasulullah do not negate it on Muslims. I don't do blanket takfir on anyone and my love. And I call, I make dua for all those sects, Shia, Sunnah, Khawarij, whatever they are, that are today. I, I make dua for them and for myself, first of all, that Allah guides us to the right things. But I view them all as my brothers. Those who don't like that, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't preach hate under the banner of love. If the Sawwuf had taught us anything, it taught us to love, not to hate. We disagree, absolutely. We don't compromise the basis. Sure, I said the reconcilable differences. That's no cause for hate. We do da'wah in the best way. So we make dua that Allah guides the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back to the Qur'an and the actual Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't preach hate not only against the Muslims of various sects. I don't teach hate against anyone even if he's not Muslim. I don't preach hate against people. I believe that Islam came to teach us compassion. That we can give compassion to others as long as we are on that line of da'wah.
Anyway, having said that, I just so we can play a few things. So the whole point of Ahlul Bayt is a sensitive issue. No, but why, why, why get into it and then you're going to be labeled? Our Hanifa was labeled, the Shafi'i was labeled. Why take the risk? <coughs> Stay clean. I happen to think that cleanness is actually being close to Ahlul Bayt, not far away from them. I had big scholars, without naming names, who are close friends of mine, they came to me and spoke to me for a couple of hours, begging me, Sheikh, stop talking about Ahl al-Bayt. We love you and we know that you believe in the Quran and the Sunnah and we know you are Ahl al-Sunnah, but this gives credence to others. It's not the right time to talk about Ahl al-Bayt. I told him, when is the right time to talk about Ahl al-Bayt? Until when will we censor Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And we will choose that, Ya Rasulullah, this hadith of yours is no good to talk about now. Until when, when will we silence, until when will we silence Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at our discretion? Plays no road, plays, makes no difference. Who says who? The basis upon which we stand is the book and the authentic sunnah. That's the fact. That's what you can judge us against and that's what we will stand corrected to. And I have no pride except in that. I stand corrected any time based on the book and the authentic sunnah. Absolutely. But because it is intellectual terrorism of what Ahl al-Bayt is, and then we as Ahl al-Sunnah, we sort of, many of us, not all, again, no generalization on anything, huh? there are radicals and extremes amongst the Shias and the Khawarij and the Sunnahs and everybody. And out of those, all those sects, people will depart out of Islam, those who negate the basics of Islam, the Daruri of Islam, whether they're call themselves Shia, Sunnah, Khawarij, Matazila, Ibadi, Uzaydis, whatever they are. But because it's a sensitive issue, then you don't want to get there. We need them. We need that bit in our lives. Because it's the second weight that the Nabi Sallallahu left us and told us specifically that if you hold on to them, you will not be misguided. Another thing I need to make a point, that many of the people, especially any of the people also sometimes introducing me and or others, Allah bless them and may Allah be pleased with my brother here that introduced me. May Allah grant him Jannah for those with his family and others. It's not good enough that we belong bloodline to Ahl al-Bayt That's I believe it as a taklif, not tashrif as much. In other words, it's accountability more than it is a, an honor in a sense, a privilege. It's not about me. And it's not about people nowadays or the shiyukh or big people nowadays that belong to the genealogy of Ahl bayt No, 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 no. Don't ever deviate from what the Nabi wasallam told you. I and my father and my grandfather and many of the people who belong to Ahl al-Bayt's family's blood, bloodline today are not your standard. Your standard is the book. I left you two things. If you hold on to them, you will never be misguided after me. Kitab Allahi wa itrati. The book, the sunnah, and then the five. That's the standard. From Ahl al-Bayt, the standard is Ali ibn Abi Talib, not me. So we indulge, the reason I'm saying that is because nowadays we indulge, in, indulge extensively in talking about people who are nowadays or 100 years ago or 500 years ago belong to Ahl al-Bayt and we glorify them and we know about them and we write about their diwans and we know their seerah and biography and their people take their names and wear their shawls and they do their things and they are totally ignorant in the seerah of the master of Ahl al-Bayt himself after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he is Ali ibn Abi Talib and you call yourself, you follow Ahl al-Bayt or you love Ahl al-Bayt, you have nothing of Ahl al-Bayt if you don't know who Ali is after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And I find it quite pathetic and sad, let me say sad, 
that some of us may write, may be able to write seven, eight lines about such, such and scholar from Ahl al-Bayt. Now, 100 years ago, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, and they failed to write more than three lines about Fatima to Zahra herself. Or an Imam al-Hasan, more than five lines? I can't, there's nothing, I can't, you know. And then when we talk, we talk how many women he married. 190, or was it 75, or was it 250? So we bring all kinds of, not only weak, these are all weak, authentic, weak, weak as I need to start with, anyway, from a science of Hadith perspective. But when we talk, we bring these aspects that are weak, and we leave the authentic. Whatever, I don't know why is it done. Ignorantly, not ignorantly, I have no idea. But we need to orient, reorient our focus. When, yes, I'm not saying that the offspring of Ahl Bayt till the end of the days are not called Ahl Bayt and the Sadaqah is haram on them and all these things are true. They're called Ahl Bayt, Sadaqah is haram, etc. That can make no mistake if you don't know Ali ibn Abi Talib, Wal Hassan, Wal Hussein, Wal Fatima, and before them Rasulullah, you don't know who Ahl Bayt are. You don't know them and you don't follow them because the late, the late, the late ones, the recent ones are not the standard, but Ali, Ali and Fatima and Hassan Hussein are the standard. The standard for those very people who belong to Ahl bayt to follow is Ali and Fatima and Hassan and Hussein. Not them. They don't constitute the standard. The standard is the Book of Allah, then the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, then those five. That's the standard. Not someone who comes regardless, irrespective of how honorable he is. The wali of Allah is Ali. That's what we know for sure from Ahl al-Bayt, right? We don't know about someone who came seven, eight hundred years ago. We assume that they are, and we pray that they are. But we don't know if they are the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we know for sure by what the Nabi Adam sallallahu alayhi wa told us that Ali is Waliullah. Hmm? Among the awliya of Allah. We know that Al Hassan and Al Hussein are among the awliya. They're the masters of the youth of Al Jannah after all. Don't be chasing wrong things, dear brothers and sisters. That's why I told you I'll be frank with you. It hurts my heart. When I see people indulging in talking about so-and-so scholar and so-and-so imam five and six and seven hundred years ago about that bit and they put resumes and things three hundred pages long. And when you talk to them about Ali wa Fatima wa Hassan wa they say this is Shia talk. Really, is it? Or they don't know. You see now what's happening? Diluting the real Ahl bayt and bringing their offspring, offspring to put them in this, instead in the spot. Nuh -uh. No. Quran and Sunnah al Ahl bayt We became ignorant in Ahl bayt in Ali wa Fatima al Hassan al so far that we suggested somewhere, and I'm not gonna mention the country and the place, somewhere in the West, to name a masjid, Masjid Ali. Sunni masjid. You know what the first reaction was? By our own people. Is this a Shia masjid? Huh? Even calling our sons Ali, Wal Hassan, Wal Hussein becomes what are you doing that for? Are you calling them Ali Hassan Hussein? Are you, are you Shia? But isn't that, isn't those, aren't those the names Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself gave? And loved, to say the least. Yes, to talk about al bayt is difficult. Because not only the Ummah killed them, mind you, Ali and Hassan and Hussein were not killed by non-Muslims, huh? So we're, we get it right. They were killed by very people who claimed Islam. But you know what happened not only to the men of Ahl bayt you know what happened to Zainab and you know what happened to the family of Rasulullah after Karbala? And uh, 
Ibn Kathir mentions something nice, or not nice, whatever you like to call it. May Allah have mercy on him. He says things happen that the heart cannot say. Why not say it? I'd like to see what you're saying. I'd like to know what you say. Because nowadays it becomes taboo to talk about the struggle of Ahl al-Bayt. Because even talking about them puts you under suspicion by those who have implicit hate or nasubiyah, nasub, against Ahl al-Bayt. And that is defined by sensitivity. There's, they cannot stand it in the heart. And I define nasub or the disliking of Ahl al-Bayt in nowadays, obviously, thus as defined by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself in Hadith Muslim, لا يبغضك إلا منافق The بغض of Ali, the dislike of Ali is nifaq. But obviously it's too big of a delete, it's too big of an evidence, so people go against it. But nowadays what people do is they actively suppress and marginalize the dhikr of Ahl al-Bayt. Let's just put it aside. Actively, yeah? and dilute their characteristics. So let's dilute that. So if we talk about that, let's talk about something else. Huh? And one, one brother told me, you're talking about Muhammad. I was talking about Sayyidina Ali. He says, why don't you talk about Muawiyah as well? I said, this is the time to talk about Ali. Some other time maybe we talk about Muawiyah. It becomes that you have to, you cannot give Ahl al-Bayt their space. You have to, we have nothing against any of the Sahaba. May Allah be pleased with all the Sahaba. That's our Aqeedah as Ahl sunnah This time is for Sayyidina Ali and Ahl al-Bayt. It's got nothing to do with that. Talking about him doesn't mean belittling others. Talking about him doesn't mean marginalizing others. But there is a sensitivity in the hearts of some people that cannot stand the talk of Ali. They cannot hear the word Ali too much. Otherwise, it brings a hypersensitivity reaction. Why do you call this Masjid of Ali? Why are you talking about Ali so much? Luckily, we don't have to listen to that. And you listen to what Rasulullah said. Let me take you again to the words of the Prophet Because it's always, it, Allah preserved our deen, dear brothers and sisters. And that deen is preserved in the Quran and the authentic sunnah. And then the examples of those five. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells Sayyidina Ali in Sahih Muslim, لا يحبك إلا مؤمن ولا يبغضك إلا منافق Only a mu'min loves you, Ya Ali. And only a munafiq dislikes 